Hello everyone, welcome to Fusion 360 Tutorials. In this video, we are going to learn how to create assemblies and constrain our assemblies. Just like when we are sketching profiles, we have to constrain our sketches, we have to constrain our parts in assemblies as well. Our first step in creating an assembly model is starting with a new file. So making sure our design tab is open here, we're going to select file, new design. Next thing we want to do is we want to save that. So we're going to hit the save icon and we're going to give that a name. I'm going to call mine assembly demonstration and we can select which subfolder that we want to save that in. Mine is fine here. So I'm going to hit save. With our file saved, now we can start adding components. So I'm going to open up my data panel and I have a list of parts in my data panel that I'm going to add to that assembly. We have a few options here. We can right click on any of these and select insert into current design, or we can just drag those parts in there. One of the key points that is important is that we want to make sure that our first component in our assembly is constrained it's not able to move so i'm going to select my caster base and instead of right clicking i can just drag that into their model our assembly model there and we have some options for moving that so we can drag this in any direction to move that we can rotate it uh, we can use any of these options here um, or we can select the default and we also have we can use those distances here. So we can drag or we can add those distances in this dialog box here. And right now we see all the options for rotation, uh, linear movements. We can isolate those. Those would be uh, translation movements, rotating, uh, a point to point or a point to position. Typically, we're going to save this, use this as a default and these will stay all at zero we want to make sure that we have components selected as well too so going to select ok we have our first component placed in our assembly and you'll see it has been added to our model browser so we can expand on that and see uh, different items in that uh, but what we want to do is we want to fix that in position so that it does not rotate around um, or tran move translational when we are adding additional components. So what we can do is right click on that and we're going to select ground. And once we select ground, you'll see that little red push pin on there. That means that object is not going to move anywhere. To add all our additional components, we're just going to repeat the same process. So we're going to use our components from our data panel, and we're just going to drag them into the model just like we did the base. So I'm going to drag, select the caster support, drag that in there, and it's right on top of that. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. I'm not going to constrain that at all. I'm just adding that into the model, giving, moving it so I can uh, have some space. And at this point, I do have the option to constrain this into individual component and continue on with additional components. In this case, I'm just going to add all the components in there and then I will constrain them after. I do need two of these, so I have an option of dragging this in there. Again, I could also select that component and I could select my move copy command and you'll see uh, the same um, glyphs that pop up here for us to uh, move those or rotate those in any direction but I'm going to select create copy make sure I select create copy and then I'm just going to drag this one over there select OK so I have those two components in there and I will continue with the rest of these components my caster wheel dragging that and moving that out of the way so that when we go to constrain that uh, we can see some items a little more clearly select OK and I have uh, my caster axle again moving that just into space randomly so that we can constrain those and not have too much in the way and our caster bushing
place that in there. Now I have all my components placed in the assembly. Just going to save because I'm going to be coming back to this um, once we learn about constraints. I've opened up another assembly file here that has some components in there. And in this portion, we're going to learn how to constrain components to other components and the different methods that we can use to create those constraints. When we're constraining components to other components, we're going to use something referred to as joint origins. Joint origins are specifying a point or a surface, a point on a surface, an edge endpoint. And what we're going to do is match that up with uh, a surface endpoint uh, on another component. So more or less, we're saying put this point on this object and assemble it to this point on that object. And those are referred to as joint origins. So if I go up to my assemble menu, my assemble tab, and I'm going to select joint shortcut J. And now it is asking me to select which components that I want to constrain to each other or assemble to each other. In this case, it's actually allowing me to select this base object because I have unpinned that base part. So if this was pinned, this would not be an option. But for this demonstration, I have unpinned this. So what it's looking for now is it's looking for us to select something on this component. You'll see lots of uh, glyphs there, little nodes on there. And you'll also see that my surface, when I'm touching the surface, it's actually shading it just a little bit lighter, which tells me I'm using the, the surface. If I just go over to an edge, you might see that surface disappear. Now it's just selecting a point on somewhere on this edge. In order to control this, um, a super helpful tip here that's going to make this super easy is going to use your control key. So when it's not grayed out, we are just selecting points along the edges. When the surface is grayed out, that means we're selecting a point that is on the surface and on that edge. So right now this is grayed out. If I want to maintain this using this surface, I'm going to hold my control key down and no matter where I go, it's going to use that surface. So this would be surface point, surface corner, uh, surface center. If I release that control key, I am now able to select just edge point. So edge corner, edge corner. It is not including that surface in the constraint. Likewise, if I hover over this edge and I hold the control key, it's just going to allow me to select any point on that edge. So end point, midpoint, corner point. Release that and now it's going to give me that option to select any other surface or any other point. So very important um, because it can become um, pretty, you have to be pretty precise with this. So holding that control key is definitely going to help you select your point or joint origin. So we've seen how to select joint origins on a flat surface. It's very similar to a cylindrical surface. So if I was to select my assemble joint, I am going to see the same type of uh, selection options on here. So if I select this surface, hold my control key, it doesn't matter where I move my mouse, it's going to select that surface. And likewise, if I selected the edge, if I move my mouse around, it's going to take the center of that edge. Likewise, on this surface and any surface around here. So again, using your control key to lock that in, uh, this would be the midpoint of that cylinder. Um, if we selected this, this would be the center point of that edge. And if we selected the surface, that would be the center point of that circular surface. Moving down to the sphere, we can select just the center of that sphere. So that is our only option on when we are selecting or using spheres. Within our joint dialog box here, we also have the option to constrain something between two faces. So if you wanted to constrain something that is exactly halfway between two different faces, we could select that option and it's going to ask us for two planes. So this would kind of be like a planar reference. And then I'm going to select that. 
other plane. So what that's going to do is going to put constraint something. My constraint on this object is going to be exactly halfway between those two planes. So far in Fusion, what we have said is take the edge or point or surface of this component and match it up or join it to the edge surface or point of another component. So we have fixed it kind of in place, but now we have to say, okay, yeah, these points or edges are touching or have to line up with each other, but are they allowed to move? And we're going to have to specify which way those objects are going to move because they've only been really fixed in one location so far. So to demonstrate that, I'm just going to bring in my bar assembly here and as a point, when this dialog box pops up, we had these options to move these items around, or we could use uh, the dialog box, put values in there. We can place that anywhere. We can just select OK. And now we can just move these around freely, freely by left clicking on the left clicking and dragging on that object, just like any of these objects as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, my first uh, joint origin and select joint and it's asking for my first component. So I'm going to select this edge as my first component and for my second component, I'm going to select this top edge there. So you can see it's actually added that to that, uh, that joint. So they are going to line up there and I can rotate this around and put that where I want it to be. So if I wanted to, to be in that location there, um, I could use my dialog box again to rotate those items around. So if I wanted it to be flush, I would go up to the, the negative 90 degrees there. I can fill those out and I can also use the flip. So that would flip that. So it's on the bottom in the top surface and then I could flip that. So um, now it is flipped around, rotated around an axis. I'm going to leave it there for now. And if you're looking up in the dialog box here, we're going to see motion. So when we select motion, this is where we're going to select where this can move. We fixed it on this line, but we do have the option because it can still move this way. Um, so there are some other degrees of freedom that this is still able to move. So when we select motion, we are going to have lots of options under here. So there is rigid. So that's pretty much just going to fix that right in place. So it can't move anywhere except for where we've left it. So you might want to constrain that on, um, say, this surface here to this surface here. Um, this one is revolute. So what that's going to do is it's going to revolve around that joint origin. So we created this joint origin, which was this top line here. We align those two surfaces. So if we selected Revolute and we hit play, just to demonstrate that, it is going to rotate around that joint origin that we created. So that tells us what our, our degrees of freedom are. And now we can select another option here. This is a slider. So the component's going to move along a single axis. So if we select a slider, it's going to demonstrate <clears throat> how it's going to move. So it's along that uh, joint origin. Again, it's going to slide up and down. So we can just hit the play again, and that's going to demonstrate where we are allowing that to move. It's not a constraint. It's not saying it can move from here to there, but it's just going to demonstrate that this is the direction that this is allowed to move right now using my slider. We also have a cylindrical. So this means it's going to rotate um, along a single axis, which could be very similar um, to the Re Revolute. But when we select this, um, <clears throat> we do have to select an axis. So this is selected the, the Z axis by default. Um, and if we selected a custom axis, we could select either of these axes. And now you're going to see it's going to revolve around the different uh, default axes. If I select custom and I selected this as my axes to rotate around, it is going to move. So it has um, a cylindrical. So cylindrical means it can go up and down that axis as well as rotate around that axis. 
So it's actually two movements. So imagine a bolt going up and down as well as rotating. So it goes up and down an axis, but it also revolves uh, 360 degrees or clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, the pin slot we'll get into further and the planer. Um, what you're going to do is we've only selected an, an edge there. So we will demonstrate the planer in a different uh, uh, different uh, demonstration and the ball, which we will use a different demonstration for that too. So going to select cancel on that one and say example for this. Um, let's look at this, th this bolt here. So if we're going to pull up our joint menu and we're going to select the center of that circle and we're going to select the center here which would be the center of that circle that would be face holding the control key down it would give us the same point I'm going to select that so it is telling me that it is those that joint that joint origin that I selected here if we go back to our motion and uh, hit our um, Revolute. So that's just going to rotate that around that origin. If we went back to our cylindrical and now it is rotating around that joint origin, but it also has a slider and axis that's going up and down. So that's a little more applicable than using this rectangular that we showed. So once again, a cylindrical rotates around and moves, rotates around and moves uh, along a single axis. So it's rotating around that axis and it's also moving up and down. Now using the ball uh, motion on this, so remember I have used this center point as my joint origin and if I use my ball really that's going to give it uh, 360 degrees of freedom. It can rotate all around. If I cancel this and I'm going to use that same constraint with this ball, I'm going to select the center of that ball and I'll just select this corner point here. And if under my motion, if I select ball, it's hard to see that. Uh, maybe I can zoom in on there, but it, it will rotate. It's just rotating. It's free to rotate around just like any typical ball would. I'll cancel that and zoom out. So um, as a recap on that, select our joint and we're going to select our joint origins and then we're going to select our motion, the different types of motions. Understanding all these motions at first um, can be a little bit challenging, but when you go to constrain components using the joint origins and then using or playing around with the different motions uh, the more you use them the more you will get familiar with them and understand them and it will eventually become second nature so just as a quick recap on joint origins when constraining assemblies we have when we select the the join command or the joint command we're going to select surfaces that's when you're surface is highlighted and you can select a midpoint of a surface a midpoint of an edge surface end point of an edge surface and we can also select uh, the center point uh, using the surface command as well too and using edges so we hold the control key lock down edges we have the midpoint of an edge and we have the end point of an edge and on the circle we also have the center point of that circular edge and on cylindrical features shown like this bolt here we select uh, we can select the midpoint and the end point and the other end point and spheres you can only select the center so there's our, our options for selecting uh, joint origins surface and edges remember to use the control key to lock on because it is uh, very detailed sometimes hard to pick the right object so very easy if you want it on the surface highlight the surface hold your control key and then you can select all those points an edge click on the edge hold your control point and you can select those edges and just as a quick demonstration if i'm going to constrain this this little bar here to the edge of this uh, i've hit my joint uh, j for my uh my joint origin command and I'm going to select I'll go select this surface bottom 
edge point. And on my second part here, I'm going to select my surface top edge point and that object won't move to that location. That's not what I wanted. It's actually rotated. So I'm going to select my flip command. And now that is fixed on that point because I did use the rigid constraint. I could also do some offsets on there. So I could drag that if I wanted that two millimeters that way. I can constrain that that way and that will be fixed at two millimeters that edge from that edge and select OK. So that object is constrained. If I did want to constrain this in additional directions, say a distance from this edge, then I would probably want to select that point there as my constraint as opposed to the first point. So uh, you'll see down in your family or in your timeline here, you will see your constraint in there. Also up in here, we will see our joint in there and we can name these any way we like. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to delete this joint here. I'm going to move that out in space there. Select my joint command again. And I'm going to select this corner here. I'll select the face again. That corner face with this corner face. And I will flip that. Make sure I get the right orientation. And then I can add some additional constraints on that. So three millimeters that way and three millimeters that way and my constraint is rigid so now that little bar is actually constrained to that surface at those dimensions you will notice that it does show a uh, little glyphs there of your constraints sometimes it's good to if you want to hide those if it gets pretty busy you can actually turn these off there as well too um, Sometimes you might want to clear them off. If we want to edit our constraint, we can double click on there and make any modifications to our joint origins or constraints. Follow along in the next video and we will put these joint origins and constraints and motions to practice.